we are going to look at a series of questions that relate to the FA2 syllabus. This first question relates to syllabus area A. Looking at the information, the first bit tells us that Dan works in a team to produce financial statements and that he has been told that it is important, as we know, that the financial statements are relevant. The question asks us which of the following statements describes the qualitative characteristic of relevance. This is one of four characteristics. We have relevance, reliability, comparability and understandability. The options we are given help describe a mixture of these principles. However, what we've got to find is the one that directly relates to relevance. Looking at the first option, saying that it is information which is free from error, that doesn't directly relate to relevance. Whether it's free from error or not, it could very much be relevant to the users. Information which is neutral means that it's free from bias. This doesn't really relate to it being relevant, but it definitely relates to it being reliable. The third option is information which is capable of making a difference in the decisions made by users. If it helps aid the decisions of the users of the financial information, then it's definitely going to be relevant. But just to double check our fourth option, information which can easily be understood, this would relate to the concept of understandability. So therefore, while options one, two and four relate to different characteristics of financial information, third option, that information which is capable of making a difference in the decisions made by users relates to the characteristic of relevance. Question two, which also focuses on syllabus area A, also looks at principles around how and why we prepare our financial information. This question asks us which of the following relates to the principle of prudence. The main aims of prudence is to avoid overstatement of income and assets in the financial information, plus ensure that provisions have been made for all known liabilities. The options we have to help us decide which one relates to prudence. The first one says that it is the exercise of caution when making judgments under conditions of uncertainty. That very much feels like prudence. When we're uncertain about balances within the financial information, we will want to make sure that we're not overstating good news and that we are making sure that we've considered everything available. To check the other statements though, the second one says that it requires that expenditure incurred in a particular accounting period should be accounted for in that period. That's the matching principle. It's not relevant to prudence. The third option, it assumes that all businesses will continue in operation for the foreseeable future. That relates to going concern, making sure that a business can continue. And then the fourth option, it separates the individual who owns the business from the business itself. That's looking at the separate entity principle. So again, not relevant to prudence. So the correct answer is definitely the first option. It's the exercise of caution when making judgments under conditions of uncertainty. The next question in our bank relates to the syllabus area B. Here we're given some information relating to a business. It tells us that we have cash of $3,300. We have trade payables of $7,500, a loan liability of $24,000 and land of $78,000. And with that information, what we have to do is decide what is the capital balance. This question draws on your knowledge of the accounting equation. Remember that capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. The first step in answering this question is to decide that the four balances that we've been given, are they assets or are they liabilities? If we look at cash of 3,300, cash is an asset. So I'm going to put that down here. Trade payables of 7,500, that's a liability. It's amounts that the business owns their suppliers. So I'm going to put that 7,500 on this side. Loan liabilities, a loan again is something that's owed by the business, so that's a liability, so 24,000 over here. And land of 78,000, that land is owned by the business, and so therefore that's an asset, so I'm going to put 78,000 here. 
Therefore, I've now got a total for my assets and my liabilities. Assets equal 81,300. Liabilities equal 31,500. Therefore, to complete the accounting equation and get to our capital figure, I need to take my assets and take away my liabilities, which is going to give me my capital balance, which is 49,800. Finally, looking at the choices available, is there one that matches the calculation that we have just done? Yes, there is. Brilliant. The first option is the correct one.